Drones are a great way to grab dramatic social media content, but they can be intimidating for beginners. Snap took a different approach with its new $230 Pixie drone. It requires very little skill and acts like a personal robot photographer to help you produce cool aerial shots. You don't need to control the Pixie. In fact, you couldn't even if you wanted to. Rather, it performs pre-programmed flight patterns that focus on you, the user. It has great potential for things like parties or tourist activities, grabbing cool looking shots without a lot of fuss. Snap calls itself a camera company, but photo taking products like spectacles have met with limited success. To me, the Pixie drone holds more promise because it could really help users create more interesting content. Let's take a closer look to see if it lives up to that. The Pixie weighs just 101 grams and is small enough to throw in a bag or wear around your neck. It's pretty cute, so I got lots of oohs and ahs from friends and bystanders. It proved resistant to falls and accidents, despite the slightly flimsy look. The four propellers are protected so they can't snag a finger or tree branch. On top, it has a start button and a mode dial with the battery and charge levels underneath. There's also a camera on the bottom, but it's strictly for detecting your hand. The USB-C port at back lets you charge the drone or transfer files to your phone. The primary front camera takes 2.7K video at 30 frames per second and 12 megapixel images. It shoots in 16x9 landscape mode, which is a bit weird considering that snaps are vertical. However, a cropping tool in the app lets you convert your captures to portrait mode. Using the Pixie couldn't be simpler. The first thing to do is sync it up with your Snapchat account via Bluetooth, a process that was seamless on both an iPhone 12 and Galaxy S10. Then you can choose from four flight modes, hover, reveal, follow, and orbit. Each of those can be tweaked via the app with different distances. You can also save a flight mode like reveal with a specific distance using the favorite dial button. Once you've got the mode you want, just hold the Pixie up so its camera can see your face. Then press the start button and it'll take off and perform the selected maneuver, saving video and or photos to the 16 gigabytes of internal storage. It uses face detection to track subjects. Some of the modes, like follow, require it to see your face to track you properly. It usually holds on tenaciously to the same face, even if multiple people are in a shot. When the sequence is finished, you just hold your hand underneath and it'll land directly on it. That's where the bottom camera comes into play. It worked pretty reliably, but sometimes I had to move my hand a bit to catch it. Afterwards, you can import your clips or photos and easily trim or adjust them. You can also add music and special Pixie AR effects or lenses. Some of those include flame aura, record effect and others. And you can also do time changes with things like jump cuts and hyperspeed. That's what it can do, but here's what it can't. There are no obstacle detection sensors at all, so if something gets in the way, it's going to crash right into it. Leaves and twigs didn't always stop it, but walls and branches certainly did. Luckily, as mentioned, the Pixie is fairly tough. Since it can't go very far or very high, up to 10 meters or 30 feet at the most, obstacles shouldn't be an issue for most people. Your best bet is to test it in open areas to get a feel for each maneuver. Another limitation is flight time. Snap told me that the Pixie can fly for four to five minutes on a charge, which equates to around five to 10 flights. It comes with an extra battery and you can buy more for $20 each and a portable dual battery charger for $50. It also lacks a gimbal, so you might get some shaky footage if you're flying in a lot of wind. And speaking of which, the Pixie's lightweight means you can't really fly it outside in gusty conditions. So what about picture quality? But it's fine, really. When I showed it to my professional photographer friend Samuel, he was pleasantly surprised. It adjusted well going from shade to sunlight and worked fine indoors with a reasonable amount of light. On a PC and big screen, it's clear that it can't compare to a smartphone or other drones, particularly in low light. 
but even when cropped vertically, it looks pretty decent on a smartphone. Considering that it's designed for Snapchat, which can only be used on a smartphone, the quality is absolutely good enough. Samuel took it to a wedding and he found it great to grab some extra shots or as a behind the scenes tool. All he had to do was just get it started and it would do the rest with little to no effort on his part. I personally found it to be absolutely fine as a quick and easy drone. Still, I'm no social media guru, so I had a quick chat with our Engadget expert on that subject, Carissa Bell. Yeah, I think it's a really interesting product. You know, if you think about what they've done with spectacles, you know, spectacles were, were always interesting because there's a lot of interest in them in the beginning. Once you start using them, they're really more of a novelty. Pixie is interesting because, you know, it really does seem to have more possibilities. If you're somebody that's really active on Snapchat, you're making videos for, say, for Spotlight, which is kind of their their take on a sort of TikTok-like feature. Um, I think that there's really like a ton of possibilities where you can get really creative. $230 is still, that's not a small amount of money, especially for, for younger people, which is Snapchat's kind of core demographic. So, you know, I think it could be more of a success than the spectacles, but it, it's hard to say because, you know, there are a lot of other drone companies out there. You have a lot of options to choose from if you're just looking for a drone. Snap may be onto something with a Pixie. It's not nearly as capable as DJI or other pricier drones, but that's not really the point. Rather, it's a way for social media users to get some cinematic shots without the need to be a drone expert. It's also great for social media users who just want to be the subject and let the pixie focus on the photo or video chores. That way, if you're on a night out with friends, you can send it off to grab some shots without the need for a selfie stick or other gear. It's not perfect as battery life is pretty poor and image quality merely passable. At $230, it's also quite expensive considering that you could buy a pretty decent drone for that kind of money. But the Pixie isn't designed for average drone users who might understandably balk at that price. It's made for social media folks who might even consider it to be cheap considering what it could do for them. The reactions I saw to it from friends and passers-by were overwhelmingly positive, with a number of people saying they might even buy one. If that's any kind of sign, the Pixie might become a hit. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe. And for more tech news, check out Engadget.com.